71 and no retirement. She calls into a talk show that you're well aware of and receives bad advice. Uh, I'm not going to name the guy's name because I just don't want to. But anyway, so um, I got an email from some guy who every now and again will send me something stupid. I mean, it's just, it's fun because it's, you know, he sends me, I mean, he, he thinks he's sticking it to me. I'm going to show you, Josh, that you're wrong. It was, it's, it's just silly, man. It's silly, silly, silly. But uh, he says, instead of telling, you know, people to do what you say, why don't you uh, tell them to do what this guy says? And you, you'll know the guy. I'm not, I'm not going to mention his name, though, but you'll know him. So a lady calls in, sorry about the hair, sorry about the, I haven't brushed, haven't even brushed my teeth. Wife's out of town early in the morning, got to shave, got to get my hair cut for my wife. That's how you save money, baby. You get your wife to cut your hair. You make your own food, you get your wife to cut your hair, and you don't have a car loan. Do that, and you are good to go. Anyway, so this lady calls in, uh, she and her husband, she's 71. She and her husband make a combined 2000 a month in Social Security. Inherently, they obviously took it at 62, obviously. And because they took it at 62, they're locking those low amounts for the rest of their life. Sad, dude. And uh, I guarantee they thought they needed the money at 62, and they certainly do need the money now. So they locked it in at 62, where they're still young enough to be able to, uh, to work harder to defer taking Social Security. But they didn't do that because they have bad money problems. They, have, they, they can't manage money well, obviously. And, you know, it's just what it is, man. They made some mistakes, but the interesting thing is they only owe, like I said, twenty five thousand or twenty thousand, twenty thousand on a home. That's worth two fifty. Interesting, interesting. All right, so they have, uh, let's see, twenty five thousand in cash, uh, ten thousand car note if memory serves, something like that. Enough cash to pay off the car. Let's just put it that way. All right, so they have three vehicles. One's got debt on it. They got twenty five thousand in cash. And they have a mortgage on top of the, the debt on the car of 20000 bucks. that makes sense? The lady's in a pure panic. You can tell in her voice. She's nervous. She's uh, stressed out. Husband sounds like he's got some physical issues. He can't work. I, I, something, something tells me this guy um, isn't carrying his weight, if that makes sense. And that freaking pisses me off. Now, I'm not trying. I don't know this guy. She didn't elaborate. I don't know. So I might be wrong. But just the way... They have a roadster like worth ten thousand bucks, and I just like, why do you got a roadster? Well, because the husband wanted it, and he wanted it off his wife's literally back her labor. And again, she didn't say that, but that's my intuition. I've seen this before, man. And so she's carrying the weight, and she's stressed because the husband stresses her out. So what does our prognosticator tell her to do? Uh, sell the house and move into a condo. <laughs> and she didn't want to sell the house, and she said. Well, the HOA fees, and she's 100% right. And the prognosticator said, no, no, no. You can find a condo essentially with no HOA fees and you're a part of the country. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, what? What? Huh? Maybe. What condo has no condo fees? I just, I'm sitting there thinking, huh? So the prognosticator, the, the mind-bogglingly obvious thing here is to take a reverse mortgage against the equity in your home. Why would you not flip and recommend this? She's in a panic. She is in a laborious job that's physically demanding on her. Her husband, for whatever reason, can't work or doesn't, I don't know what it is, but she's stressed out. They got all this equity in their home. And you want to tell them to sell their house, which is basically paid for. And if you took a reverse mortgage, you don't pay anything again and buy a condo, which is going to have a condo association fee. I, I, what? And she, oh my, on top of the closing costs, on top of all that stuff. And the guy who emailed me this is basically, see, Josh, you should do this instead of telling people to go into further debt. What do you think a condo fee is? Is a condo fee not debt? Of course it is. What? I mean, my poor lady lives in Oklahoma City. The prognosticator says, sell your house and buy a condo for 100,000 bucks. Yeah, and there's no condo fee. So I just looked up one. Here's Oklahoma City. This is a condo for $75,000. All right, so two bed, one bath. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's a great part of town. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure as safe as can be. Who knows? All right, what's the condo fee? 250. 250 is a condo fee. 
Are you freaking crazy? Are you insane? That you're going to tell her just up and sell your house, go buy a condo for a hundred thousand dollars? There's no what is what is happening? Why are people so adamant against just the freaking obvious, which is to use your equity to finance your retirement? She's in debt. She'll never have to pay it as long as she stays in the house, dudes. Oh my goodness, but the bank could take her house. How? How is the bank going to take her house? She signs a letter every year, I guess. They can't, like we did a video on this yesterday. They're just validating that she's still a primary resident. Okay, that's part of the contract. You're still the primary resident. Okay, so you sign a letter acknowledging the primary resident. So you got to pay your property tax and homeowner's insurance. How much is the property tax and homeowner's insurance on a $250,000 house in Oklahoma when you're over the age of 65 and you probably bought it you know, it's probably, you know, you're probably, you probably bought it for a hundred thousand bucks. Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. This house for 224 right here. All right. Something like that. Right here. The property tax is uh 223 a month in the home. So but basically the same thing right there. And that's on, I, I, you know, this house right here, the cost of sale, 224, two beds, two and a half baths, 1400 square feet. I, this is the first house I chose. I have no idea. No idea if the same amount. Essentially, I can almost assure you, though, the older people who have been in their house for a long time aren't paying the new property tax. Because what happens in California, by the way, because of, I think it's Prop 13, because you're in your house, your property tax is low. The next guy's got to pay the higher property tax. All right, so we're, we're back to even. So now we, we trade our house in for a condo, a crappy old condo. We don't want to be in a crappy old condo. We have the same monthly costs, and I guarantee your property tax and homeowner's insurance are less than what the condo fees would be. All right. Oh, and by the way, the condo fees, well, guess what happens? Oh, they can raise them. Why? Because I was talking to the guy the other day. Guess what happened? Oh, they needed some plumbing work, some significant plumbing work on his condo. And there's going to be an assessment, a fee of, I think it was like 5000 bucks, at least a one-time fee or something like that. Oh, how great. And by the way, you're in a condo as opposed to living in your single family home. What do condo fees cover, by the way? Sewage lines right there. Trash collection, snow removal, common areas, patio, sidewalks, landscaping, lobby, if you got a swimming pool, the whole thing. Painting the walls, physical exterior, obviously the roof. And you're still going to have to have private property insurance on your inside, too, of the condo. You're still going to have personal property insurance and whatnot. That, this is just absurd. Now, check this out. This is, I, I literally, this is the, the 66% of Americans own their home, all right, as I talk about my book, Relax and Retire. According to the most recent data from the Census Bureau, households aged 65 and older have over $300,000. I'm not sure if it's average or if it's uh, median equity. So these people have $200,000 of equity right there. But this guy who emailed me, but they don't want to. Why do you tell people to go in debt? Because they have all this equity in their home. I was getting ready to say something bad. And they're stressed out. And they got no source of income other than their equity downsize and live in a condo doesn't solve that. It frees up $100,000 cash. I'll grant you. I wonder if there's another way we could do that. Let's take a look, shall we? Look at Wade Fowles' re reverse mortgage calculator on uh, retirementresearcher.com. Oh, guess what they get right here? They get $621 a month as a term payment or for monthly $532. Basically, so term would be for, uh, that's for 20 years. Look at that, 20 years. She's 71, all right? 621 a month for 20 years or 532 for the rest of her life. I, I mean, dude, this is freaking insanity. But they're going into debt, dude. Dude. They don't want, they want to leave it to their kids. She is stressed out. Or leaving it to her kids if she didn't say that, by the way. But even if so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Something has got to give here because you are financing your whole family with your work as a laborious job doing housekeeping while your husband, whatever the hell he's doing, I don't know. But either way, that 2000 a month that you're making in his labor, that's, you can't do that for the rest of your life. Selling a house and moving to a condo is just so absurd, it's insane. You don't want to do that. Is there another option? Yes, there is. This thing called reverse mortgage. You can stay in your house. Yes, theoretically, you could have no equity when you die. Well, guess what? You're dead. So guess who takes that? The bank takes it. Does that matter? You're dead. You still have your house. You still got to freaking maintain it, which you would do anyway. And maintain is no one's going to come knock. Well, I guess I should say. Theoretically, someone could knock to your door and say, hey, I see, I see your roofs are falling off. You got to maintain those. All right. It's shocking, right? So, I mean, you still got to pay your property taxes. So, you got to pay your homeowner's insurance. But you have access to that money that can never go away tax-free.
tax free. Oh, and you still got equity in there because don't forget, even as a seventy one year old person here, there's you're you're still only getting your principal limiting factor is forty one percent, which means you're not borrowing even close to fifty percent of the freaking total amount of the of the house. You pay off your mortgage, you have no you freed up your mortgage and you increase your income by five hundred thirty two dollars a month. And you still get equity in there. Now you can't access it unless you sell it. But it's not like it's the bank is taking it tomorrow. So let's just say your mortgage, I don't know, let's say 500 bucks a month. You've literally increased your cash flow by $1,000 a month by taking a reverse mortgage. And you still have your house. You haven't paid the closing costs to sell. You're not paying the HOA fee for a condo. That could go up every year. I just literally, and the idea, I just, it's, and, and, and how many people like, oh, there's some closing costs. Yeah, there are closing costs. There's not closing costs of selling your house, not closing costs of going to a condo. There's a closing costs on both sides of the equation. The fee to move? Your husband's financially or physically impaired, apparently, and you're not that great either. Who's going to move you? You're going to pay some guy to move you? That ain't cheap. Do you want to move to a condo in a crappy part of Oklahoma City? Of course not. What, what, what is happening? Why are people, it's like weird, man. Yes, I, my first book I wrote, the first chapter was Debt is the Enemy. And debt, we want to get out of it. Common sense dictates, dudes. I, why did I write that first book? Because financial stress is the biggest cause of divorce. It ain't pornography, cheating on your wife, drinking and driving, all that stuff. It's financial stress. And financial stress leads to divorce, which means children are now at, uh, at risk. Especially children, young men who are being raised by a single mom. They're risked by predators out there and lots of predators out there trying to steer them wrong. Gangbangers, you know, uh, let's just put it this way. The Catholic Church let us all down big time, big time. And they knew what was happening. They did not do anything. They still let it happen. That kind of stuff probably would never have happened if a dad was at home with his boy. You see what I'm saying? Broken families are broken society. Finnegan, that's just a fact. How do we not break families by remediate or mitigate financial stress? And that means we use our ability to hopefully pay off debt. But if we can't pay off debt, we use whatever tool we have, which is using the equity in your home, leasing a car for if you need one. I talk about in my book, Strategic Money Planning, which I'll put in a link in the show notes. As opposed to freaking this fantasy land of moving to a condo as if that's going to solve your problems. Now, these people obviously made bad choices when they took Social Security. They obviously didn't do enough to save. They obviously, the husband probably didn't work that hard. They said they had medical bills. I don't know. I don't know the circumstance. Whatever. But they have $200,000 of equity in their home. To not use that, at bottles of mind. And not even give it as an opportunity from this guy. And then some guy sniping at me like, how dare you tell him to go in debt? Yeah, it's easy to say they're guy. Easy to say. The reality works differently. It's kind of like saying, you should save 10% of your income. If you're not, you're an idiot. Yeah, easy to say there, guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it's just because I was raised poor, you know, by a single mom in Maine. I don't know. I don't know. But my heart bleeds for this woman, and especially bleeds for this woman because she's trying to do the right thing for her husband to carry the weight. <laughs> and she gets bad advice. And then you got people piling on to tell me like, oh, you're an idiot, Josh. You're the man. We'll see you.